Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to share with you guys the earning potential of an engineer. So if this is you guys' first time on my channel, hi, my name is Abby. I am an aerospace engineer and I have been in the field for about five years now. As an engineer, you can generally expect to make pretty good money, uh, but the specific amount will of course depend on uh, the level of experience, the industry you work in, and where you live in general. In this video, I'll be sharing the exact salary that I personally um, had uh, from the beginning of my journey as an engineer, which means starting from being an intern up to today. So if you're interested in learning more about um, how much you can potentially make as an aerospace engineer, please keep watching. So before we get started, since I'll be talking about something that's kind of taboo, um, which is how much money I make, I just wanted to put a disclaimer and make sure that you guys are on the same page as me. I just want to let you know, do, do not ever, ever compare yourself to anyone. Uh, the purpose of this video is not to gloat or anything like that. I'm just kind of sharing experience. I'm sharing my own experience. I'm sharing my own um, salary so that you guys can use it as you know, an example, um, I know that a lot of the salaries that I'm going to share today are probably a lot less than what is offered today because the market is different. Um, so please keep that in mind. Don't compare yourself to me. Do not compare yourself to anyone else. Everyone is on their own journey, on their own path. And I hope you use this video uh, for the sole purpose of providing you information and keeping you educated on what to expect in general. So. Starting with my first ever internship as an engineer, I remember I was like just freshly a sophomore in college and I kind of realized that I wanted to get an internship. At the time I was already working like three jobs to try to <laughs> like make, you know, ends meet. Um, so I applied everywhere, I was kind of going online, sending applications, I didn't really hear from anyone except for this one small company in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, so I went through the interview process and they decided to hire me as an intern. Um, and what they paid me at the time was $15 an hour. Now, $15 an hour doesn't seem like a lot, but in 2015, that was like, to me, was a lot of money. I was like, okay, this is great. Like I'm getting my first internship, I'm making money. And I worked with them for almost two years, a little bit less than two years. Um, I gained a lot of experience. I realized that in order for me to get a job at the end of college, I realized that I needed some internship experience. So um, that internship was very, very helpful in helping me kind of gain some experience. So my next internship, so I had two internships in college. My next internship was at a much bigger company. Um, and I got this internship through a hiring event that uh, Arizona State University used to host for the engineering department. Um, so I printed my resumes and I went everywhere to literally every single company that was there and I talked to all of the recruiters and I gave them my uh, my resume. Thankfully, one of the recruiters was really impressed with my resume and he decided to expedite it. He was like, hey, I'm going to expedite it to the hired manager. You should hear from us tomorrow. Um, so yeah, the next day uh, they called me to set up a, a, like a, an interview and I was so excited. I was so nervous. Um, and the interview went really well and they wanted to proceed and hire me as an intern. Uh, and at the time they were paying me about like $21 an hour, I believe, which I thought it was a lot of money at the time. I was like, oh my God, like this is great. Um, I'm getting paid to do what I love. Um, so I was an intern there up to the end of my uh, like undergrad. And that kind of brings me to my first ever full-time job like entry-level job which was with the same company that I had the internship with thankfully after I graduated they offered me a full-time position as a sy associate systems engineer uh, which I was very very happy about um, the good thing was that I had already worked for them for a little bit over a year as an intern so I was very used to this, their system I was very used to the satellites they were producing like their manufacturing process their design process and all of that um, so what they offered me at the time was $68,000 as an entry-level position. However, I decided not to take that and I decided to put in a, 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 like a counter offer for $75,000. Um, so my argument for that was pretty much that I, since I already was working for them and I understood pretty much everything and if I got hired as a full-time, I'll probably be doing the same work. I was doing as an intern but just kind of more responsibility 
Um, I used that at, to my advantage and I said, hey, so um, I feel like I should be paid a little bit more because I'm gonna save you time from training, like all of this. And I, the counter alpha was 75K and they, when they get, got back to me, they offered me 72K, uh, which I decided to take because most of the time they won't give you the exact amount. They'll try to like give you a little bit lower than that. So yeah. That was my first ever entry-level job where I got paid $72,000. Now, if you are in a different state outside of Arizona, you might be getting paid more. Like if you live in California or live in Washington, these states are a lot, states are a lot um, you know, the, the standard of living here is a lot higher. So some people might be getting paid as an entry-level a lot more than me at the time. After two years, almost a little bit over two years of working in the position um, that I got hired at the first time as a entry-level engineer, I decided to switch teams. So I was still with the same company. However, I kind of wanted to work on something different. So I joined a different team. Uh, but I just want to mention that when you work for a company, usually every year you do a yearly review with your manager and usually you get like a percentage increase. Um, it's most of the time it's like three to four <clears> percent, <throat> which only accounts for inflation that year. But I just want to keep in mind that my salary increased a little bit throughout um, from 72K that I talked about earlier. Um, however, when I switched teams, um, I got promoted as well. And uh, that's when my salary went from 72K to 86K, I believe. So yeah, uh, fast forward to today. I'm currently living in Seattle, Washington, and I'm no longer in Arizona. Um, so of course, once I moved to Seattle, my standard of living has, you know, changed. Uh, things are a lot more expensive here. Rent is a lot more expensive here. Everything is more expensive here. Therefore, the pay is gonna be more than what it is currently in Arizona. Um, I prefer to not really talk about the exact figure since I'm still working at this company and I don't wanna like, you know, I don't wanna really share it yet. Maybe in the future when I'm not, if I'm not working here anymore, I might tell you guys. But um, the one thing I can say is that it is definitely over six figures. Um, so I am very, very happy and blessed um, that I could lead this very comfortable life because of all the years that I put in and uh you know worked really hard to get to where i am today but yeah uh as i said in the beginning i hope that this video gives you some type of idea about what to expect um again the figures that i'm sharing with you are definitely going to be a lot different than what the market is like today considering um you know inflation since this was like five years ago so you have to account for inflation throughout five years you have to account for just the general uh, aerospace market changing um, and yeah so I, I know some entry-level kids that get paid a lot more than what I get paid when I got hired the first time um, so it, it's definitely going to be different but I encourage you guys to do your research before you accept offers um, I understand that and I was the same way like when I got the job I was just so excited because I was a student I was broke I had no money I was making like a little bit over minimum wage so Hearing, hearing the amount that was offered to me was like insane. I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna be pay getting paid this much, but I think it's important to do your research and learn about how much your peers around you are getting paid. Um, don't be fooled. Like when you hear people talk about getting paid six figures out of college, usually that's not the case for everyone in engineering. It really just depends on the field it, that you're in. Maybe that's a reality for people in the software development field, but in the majority of engineering fields, that's not really the case. Um, and if they are, then that it's probably because they live in a very, very expensive state like New York or Washington state or California, where it's just expensive to survive. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind and do your research. Um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this type of video. I usually don't do videos like this, but I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please make sure to subscribe. I realize that more than 50% of you guys are not subscribed, which makes me sad. So please consider subscribing if you want me to continue to make informative content like this. And yeah, I'll see you guys around and have a good day. Bye.